Uh huh. Uh -huh. I take a lot of pictures in the photo shoots where I look away. Yeah. And you and a lot of times those are the pictures that wind up getting getting chosen. I just feel like they they speak more to kind of who I am, my character. I'm not looking at the camera saying, look at me, I'm this, that, and the third. It's more look at me, I'm thinking about something, try to figure out what I'm thinking about and what's going through my mind. What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. As always, please hit that subscribe button. As y'all know, it's right there and it's free. That enables us to keep coming to you guys as often as possible with as many interviews as possible. So please hit that subscribe button, like our content, share it, talk about it, be about it. And we appreciate your guys' support and help in getting us this far. Now, today we have the honor and the privilege of being joined by a friend of mine, a man I've known for a long time and admired for even longer. Master Ace, thank you for coming through, sir. What's going on, man? Good to see you. Yes, always, always. Now today for cover story, Master Ace has selected Disposable Arts. Uh, this is his, I would say his fourth album, if you count the Master Ace Incorporated, which I always do. Um, yeah. it came out in 2001 on J-Core. Uh, and the thing that's interesting to me about the cover is coming off the cover was sitting on Chrome going from a drawing or graffiti or art to uh, act back to a picture that you had on your first two albums, what made you go back to actually using a photograph? I mean, the the sitting on Chrome art was cool, and it was kind of like an ode to a photo that my mother had on the wall in the house. Um, that we had a photo in our apartment that had it was like a it was supposed to be New York City in a nutshell, and so it had like. If you got up on the picture, you could see all of these different really cool details of stuff happening, a guy getting pickpocketed, a girl, a guy running from chest snatch of the chain, getting chased by the cops. All this stuff was happening. So I just thought that I just thought that, that would be kind of a cool departure from what I had been doing up to that point. But I, you know, my, my mind has always been on, you know, doing photo photographic covers. But that was just an opportunity. I'm this artist, uh, Kid Style, who's from Houston, Texas. Um he was up for the challenge. He drew something that we thought was really dope, you know, based on what I asked for. And so we decided to use it. But I've always been more into photo visual kind of covers. OK, so then with disposable arts, uh, as you were on Take a Look Around, you're sitting down uh, on the cover uh, and that you also do a long, hot summer. But do you remember why you decided to end up sitting down on a disposable arts cover? Yeah, I remember, I remember very vividly, actually. Um, so the label hired this photographer. Supposedly he was like a, um, this kind of high fashion photographer who um, had done some really cool things where he would take photos of artists. He would take photos of artists and then he would uh, overlay them with another photo and create kind of a whole new image. So he would basically shoot on a plane back backdrop and then he would overlay the photo of the subject with uh, a separate back background so this is what I was being told as I was going into the photo shoot that we were going to be doing so I knew that it was going to be a plain white background and um, so when I got there I had a bunch of different you know clothing options and we we changed clothes a few times but he just had me kind of sitting on this stool maybe standing a couple times but it just didn't feel like it was going anywhere I'm like I didn't feel I didn't feel comfortable trusting that the background was going to just make this, make it this great photo. And so the location that we were shooting at where the studio was, I, it was right next door to a um, auto repair shop, but they had a lot of junked cars outside and stuff like that. So honestly, when I walked in that day to, to, to the photo shoot, I saw this, this discarded car seat that was just sitting there. And it, it went into my mind like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, especially since I'm kind of known as the car guy, I wonder if I could do something with that. But it was just in the back of my mind. It wasn't something that I brought to the table. So I would say we were probably probably an hour or so into taking pictures. And I was just like, yo, man, can we do something else? Like this sitting on the stool and standing up was just like, I'm not, I don't know where this is going, but I'd like to try something 
else? And he's like, sure, what do you got in mind? I said, I'll be right back. I ran outside and I carried myself, carried this car seat in off the junk heap that was next door to the auto shop. And I sat it on the, on the thing. And he's like, well, what are you thinking here? I'm like, I, I don't know. I just, let me take a few sitting in this chair because the seat. So maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll get something cool out of that. It was, just, it was just enough standing and sitting on a stool. It was like, I didn't see it like it was going to go anywhere cool. So I thought because I was, you know, I had to sit in on Chrome. I had the uh, Warner Roll, all the car video, car culture videos and stuff like that. I thought maybe um, this could somehow lend itself to uh, my sort of comeback after five, a five or six year hiatus. Maybe there was some kind of message that could come out of that. Um, no car, just a seat. That was what I was thinking. So we took a bunch of pictures in the seat. And, um, and, and so that's why I was sitting down. Okay. And what with the, the seat <laughs> tying it into the car culture was that, did you think symbolically you were leaving that behind and you now were just in the car seat? Is that what yeah, it was? Yeah, that definitely was what it was. It was me, you know, kind of saying, okay, that was, that was a project. That was an album. That was a project that was, um, you know, a small capsule um, out, of, out of my career. I, I, I did the car thing. I was on Delicious Vinyl, signed the label in LA. I shot like two videos, two videos in LA um, and on Hollywood Boulevard and the whole nine yards. And um, so we thought it would be more successful. I mean, it was successful, but we thought it would be like this big smash kind of thing. And you know, the the East Coast was definitely not feeling the whole car movement thing that I was doing. Um, it was not being felt on the East, but it was being felt on the West, Midwest, South. They were feeling it. So um, I had just, you know, signed, um, well, I had, I had signed with the East Coast label after Delicious Vinyl. Um, that album got shelved and then I was independent. And so I just wanted to send a message to the people out there that I'm not going to be this gimmick guy that just every album is about cars, and about, you know, cruising. I wanted to, like you said, leave it behind. Okay. And then what about the overlay then now with the street? Do you, was that supposed to be a specific street? Was that? So here's the cool, here's the, here's the crazy thing about that, that overlay. So the photographer, um, after we did the photo shoot, he sent us a bunch of different um, backgrounds that he had shot specifically for my cover. And he went out and shot, I, I gave him some ideas. I was like, you know, Brooklyn Bridge, um, maybe some historic landmarks in Brooklyn, juniors, stuff like that, you know. And he went out, I guess he went out one day and he shot a bunch of stuff. I don't even know if he shot as much as he says he shot. I think some of the stuff was just stuff he had already had in his, in his, uh, in his, in his um, collection. But he came back with, he didn't take pictures of the Brooklyn Bridge. He took pictures of Queens Bridge. I'm like, I can't use this. Like, I'm not from, I'm from Brooklyn. Like, what do you, you know, so... The, all the bridge for all the bridge pictures that he took were just completely out the window. And then the other stuff that he took, none of it, like you just can look at a picture and like, nah, this is not it. This is not a cover. This is not going to be dope. And this photographer, he had already been paid his full, full entire amount. And he kind of, his attitude was, well, I, I did my job. I, I took the pictures and I gave you backgrounds. It's up to you guys to figure out the rest. And he's like, I'll send you a collection of other backgrounds that I've that I've shot. If you want to use one of those, be my guest. But he like literally removed himself from the whole process. And so that street shot that, that you see on the cover was one of several pictures that he had given us to, to choose from. And we sat there and, you know, there's a there's a way where you take the slides and kind of overlay them on top of each other. And we're doing that all day, just different backgrounds and different. So we had probably had like four or five potential photos for the cover. And so we were overlaying them, overlaying. And I remember the moment that I laid, that I overlaid that car seat picture over that street. And I was like, yo, Rich, this is it right here. And he came over, he's looking, he's like, that does look kind of cool. I said, this is the cover. I'm confident this is the cover. And um, that was the rest, as they say, you know, is, is history. Okay. Now, what about the fact that you're sitting sideways and you're not looking into the camera. That's so because on my first album cover, I, I didn't look at the camera. Um, 
it's kind of become a thing of mine. Um, because I'm kind of an introspective artist anyway, and, and, and a little, at least I try to be um, a little bit of more of a deep thinker. And so I take a lot of pictures in the photo shoots where I look away. And you and a lot of times those are the pictures that wind up getting getting chosen. I just feel like they they speak more to kind of who I am, my character. I'm not looking at the camera saying, look at me. I'm this, that and the third. It's more look at me. I'm thinking about something. Try to figure out what I'm thinking about and what's going through my mind. It's, it's, it's something bigger than what the visual is. And so a lot of those, I like the fact that I was looking down. And I think that's why I chose that picture because there was kind of a depressed time in my, in my career because I didn't know really what was going to go happen going forward. Um, I felt like it was going to be my final hurrah, last album, you know, career was going to be done after this. Um, it was just a, a chance for me to go out on my own terms. And so I chose the picture with me looking down because I kind of look sad in a way, kind of look like, like I'm kind of lamenting about something. And that was how I was feeling at the time. So it was like the perfect, the perfect photo for me. And they couldn't see my eyes because of the, the brim of the hat and all that. And then with that, in particular with disposable arts, there is a bit of, and you and I have talked about this a few times, different times over the years, but there is a bit of a, a somberness to the album, especially toward the end with the Dear Diary, the- No regrets. Last regret, no regrets, all yeah. that stuff, last rights. So- well, uh, but that's with, where I, I mean, that I, that's where I was. That's where mentally, that's where I was. I was in a somber place because in my mind, it was the end of a career. It was a, the end. I, like I, I, I gave it my best shot. Um, you know, the, my, my short of short stint on the majors didn't work out the way it had worked out for some of my peers who are going on to get plat gold and platinum plaques. Um, and so, um, I, I just, that's kind of where I was. I, I, I accepted where I was career wise. I understood that this is probably going to be it for me. I understood that I wasn't going to get major radio spins. Um, but, but, but what I under underestimated was the impact of the underground movement and the fans that, 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 that live there, you know, this is the time of Napster and file sharing was going on. And so I had no idea at that time what the impact of that was gonna be. Um, but fortunately for me, there was a entire movement of underground hip hop fans that gravitated to that album and shared it and loved it and knew the words to it before I ever even stepped on stage to perform it. Absolutely. So now when you look back at the cover for Disposable Arts, what would you think is kind of the legacy of the cover itself for you and for the album? It's my favorite cover. It's my favorite album of mine, my favorite cover. Um, I just think it looks really, really slick. I feel it looks like a piece of art. I think it would be a dope photo without the graphics on it, without the title of the album and the logo there. I think it would still be a really dope photo. I like photos where... You could just put them up, no graphic, and people walk into a room and they stare at it. And each person might have a different interpretation of what the photo means. And, and so to me, that's what that album cover kind of personifies. Well, there it is. Well, thanks for coming through the cover story, Master Ace. Appreciate it. Absolutely.